Hey everybody, it's Elliot from Little Punk People here. Today I'm here doing a Zoom interview with my cow of Mellow Church. Are you ready? Ooh. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this! I love your cover of Black Betty from your new album, From the Vault. If you could pick any of your favorite musicians to record a song with, who would you choose? Uh, thank you very much for the compliment. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing Black Betty, yeah, and uh, that that was my personal pick for our cover, so I'm, I'm pretty proud of that one. But if I had anybody that I could do a duet with or sing with, uh, I have two of them because they're both my heroes from my childhood growing up and who I emulated in bands to try to copy were uh, Bon Scott. I'd bring him back. Yeah. And then... Uh, Someone who's still alive and around is uh, Rob Halford. Uh, yeah, I got a picture. The metal, <laughs> the metal god himself. Yes. Your song conductor has some interesting lyrics. What is that song about? It's an awesome song. Oh, thanks. You. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a metaphor of being on a train and driving the metal train down the tracks, I guess. You know, it was a lot of fun song that Paul O'Neill, the late Paul O'Neill, I don't know if you know about him. He was the creator of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, and he, he helped write some songs uh, for that album, uh, Hanging in the Balance album, and uh, that was one of them. Nice. Yeah. I think that Metal Church sounds better than ever. Would you agree? Mm. I feel that it does for me, but you know I'm biased, so uh, I appreciate you saying that. That's awesome. Uh, I'm I'm more excited about Metal Church than I've ever been in my entire life, and I'm enjoying it way more than I I ever thought I would. Awesome, that's good. Yeah, thanks. What have you been doing to keep busy during quarantine? When do you think you'll be able to tour again? <sighs> Two good questions. Well, I've been building raised vegetable beds in my backyard, growing my own vegetables. That's one thing I've been really focusing on. And uh, and yeah, um, it's a tough one. Uh, it was kind of fortuitous for us because we decided consciously last year to take 2020 off because we've been touring and writing two records in the last four or five years in a row. And we wanted to take a step back and uh, let Kurt Vanderhoof do some other side projects that he's been uh, letting neglecting, uh, like his Presto Ballet band and other things like that, and start writing the new record and putting together this latest release. So I feel very bad for all the other musicians out there that had their tours, you know, canceled, and because it's their livelihood, as as you probably know. Uh, touring and uh, is is one of the main ways that bands can make money nowadays. And so without that, it, it's devastating, I'm sure. And I, I feel for all my fellow musicians out there who, who can't uh, make that money. Yeah, it really sucks right now. Can yeah. you reveal anything about yourself that your fans would never guess about you? Um, That... I I love my cat, cat Juanita. Maybe I have a cat named Juanita. Juanita. I have two cats. I have two. You cats. have three cats. Two, two cats. Oh, two. Lucifer, two cats. Lucifer, and Boo Boo. Lucifer <laughs> <laughs> and Boo Boo. Yes. I actually had a cat named Boo Boo thirty years ago when I was at, right before I was in Metal Church. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a cute black cat. Do you believe uh, there's any afterlife? And what do you hope it will be? Do I believe there's an afterlife? I believe that there's a, a, an energy in all human and animals and plants. There's an energy that exists outside of this. And I think that it, I would love to go to a place where it's, it's free of pain and suffering. And just, uh, yeah, everyone's... Uh, loving each other that's 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 my dream i hope it's like that too yeah me too what is the first thing you're gonna do when the stay home order is over um probably go to my favorite steakhouse and have a giant prime rib <laughs> nice nice I'm, I'm probably gonna have, we're probably gonna uh 
go to like a guitar store because my guitar is in setups right now. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, that's or good go idea. to a concert. We really need to go to a, a concert. concert. Yes, yes. And I, I was lucky enough to just see a concert like a week before they shut everything down. So uh, uh, missing live music for sure. Yeah, me too. What are your personal favorite songs off from the vault and damned if you do albums? Mm. Well, from the vault, I really am digging dead on the vine. <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> I think that one really came out well because, you know, we threw it together out of old stuff, just uh, spontaneous. That's a curtain, like a curtain I like to do. We don't like to beat things into the ground. We just like to organically try them out and go, is this going to work? Or if it doesn't work, move on and not drill it into the ground. So that song on this this album really uh, turned out well. You know, it's one of those where you go, wow, that turned out better than I thought it would. And I, I'm really happy and proud of that song. And off of Damned If You Do, uh, the title track is one of my favorites because of the, uh, I think the uniqueness of the hums in there. And then I, th I think it really showcases the uniqueness of Metal Church in the fact that Kurt writes these heavy thrash riffs and we can write these choruses that are melodic. And I think the, the blend of those two things, Kurt's riffing in my uh, melodic choruses is, is what defines Metal Church to me. So that's, uh, that's what I get excited about. Yeah, you pick two songs that are right off my favorites as well. Uh, I also love uh, Conductor, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I am. There's and Den of on the Vine from From the Vault. Yeah, right on. All right, thank the you. The whole album is perfect, though. I love oh. it. Oh, I appreciate that. How does your voice sound so awesome after all these years? <laughs> what is your secret? <laughs> well, I appreciate you saying my voice sounds awesome because it's it's ironic to be me. You know what I mean? It's like a, the funny thing I always say to people is, I get up on stage and yell at the top of my lungs for an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, and this is such a strange thing to me. Like who does that? And why do people want to hear somebody do that? Right. <laughs> so from uh, inside myself, I think, why would anybody want to hear me? Because I listen back to my voice and I know what I sound like over the years. And I understand that, it's powerful and I can see the attraction, but I don't listen to myself and go, God, I love my voice. But <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a strange thing, you know what I mean? But what I do love the most is putting harmonies and doubles of high pitched screams over the, the, the track. So my favorite thing is when I get to build tracks and do highs and and have like three harmonies just this full chorus like uh the war electric like that song where there's these huge high notes that i've hit and doubled and tripled and uh, that really is a lot of fun for me what goal would you really love to achieve in life other than music <sighs> just being a good person a kind person a person that uh, spreads you know, humanity, you know, being civil to each other and setting an example like that out in this world. Yes, that's a, that's a good goal. Thanks. But you, you seem pretty kind and awesome. Oh, so. <laughs> thanks. I'm working on it, you know. I'm a, I'm a dad and it's sometimes it's difficult as <laughs> someone behind your camera knows, but it seems like you don't seem like a very difficult guy. You sound like a great kid. Huh? Thank, thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. If you could live in any time period instead of right now, what period would you choose? Oh, that's a good one. What period? <sighs> the future where everything is better and everyone is happy, but not like robots and not emotionalists like, you know, some of those futuristic movies where everyone's a robot and they're just you know, they don't have uh, passion, but that's, that's the thing. That is the thing though, Elliot, is what makes uh, humankind so uh, great to me is the differences and the goods and the bads and the uglies. And that's what creates personalities, you know? And so we have to accept uh, humans for their faults and their, their, their advantages and pluses. That's what makes us human. 
If you could hang out with any of your childhood heroes, who would it be and what would you want to talk about? Mm. Childhood heroes. Uh, I don't know if I had so many childhood heroes, but you know, in my teens and laters, I had some heroes because I became a little more self-aware and you know what the world was about. And uh, when I was in my late eight, late teens, I, I really, uh, I really was drawn to more political views and uh, and like Bono of U2 was somebody that I really admired and would love to sit down and talk to a guy like him and, you know, get inspired by him. And, but there's so many heroes out there that, uh, yeah, that's just a very tough question. You have very good questions, but I guess Bono was the only one that comes to mind at this moment, but I'm sure there's so many out there that I, I would be blessed and lucky to sit down and talk with and get glean knowledge from. If you could have any superhuman power, which power would you choose? Mm. I guess it's a theme we're running through our, our interview here. I guess my power would be of empathy, to bestow empathy on mankind so that we all can relate to each other a little bit better on a deeper understanding and even in, in agree to disagree, but be respectful to each other on our differences. Nice. That's, a, that's another good answer. No, I would probably choose like just teleportation. <laughs> see see you're you're a lot more fun than i am i'm a little more <laughs> no 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 you, <laughs> your answers are more logical <laughs> oh, but boring i'm sure to a lot of viewers maybe <laughs> and for these these are comparison questions they're fine so you say what you like better okay. ACDC or judas priest oh my gosh well those are my two heroes so i i I'm taking the fifth because those two bands were my absolute favorites that were my inspirational. So uh, I, I got to say both. choose one. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I'm going to go with ACDC. Nice. Nice. That's a good choice. Yeah. I saw them live and they were absolutely incredible. Yeah, I did One of the too. first shows I've ever seen. Yeah, me too. And I saw you guys live too with uh, Amon Marth Megadeth. All right. Down Tennessee. You guys were also incredible. Oh, thanks. Remember seeing you guys was like, wow. All right. That was a fun tour. Those those bands are all fun. That was a real fun tour. We we uh we got to know the uh, Mon or Marth guys and uh, they're really great guys. I uh I, I have a quick do I have time for a quick story about those guys? Is that okay? Yeah, why not? All right. So I show up to the Casper Arena in, in Wyoming, our first show, and I'm getting off my bus and going in the back doors during the day. And I, I do yoga, so I was taking my yoga mat in to go into uh, the dressing room backstage, and I run into um, the singer from Amon or Moth, yeah, and uh, Johan. And he's this big, imposing guy. And I walk up to him, and he walks up and, hey, and I say, hey, uh, Johan, I'm Mike Al from Eldridge. I know. And he goes, do you do yoga? And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Is he going to kick my ass for being a little handsy yoga guy? And he's like, I do yoga too. <laughs> and I was like, woo. <laughs> and that's the first time I met him. And he's a sweet, sweet guy. <laughs> Touring or recording? touring but the only reason i'm touring is because i'm recording i wouldn't tour if i couldn't record so but i have to pick one like you said so i guess i have to say touring because then i get to meet the fans and that's my favorite thing awesome is there anything else you'd like to add i'd just like to add that i i think what you're doing is very special and i appreciate that you're out there uh making people happy and uh just keeping the metal world alive Elliot and, I, and thank you and your father for what you're doing and I appreciate you interviewing me thank you so much and I appreciate right. you being here for me alright buddy thank you so much man have a nice yeah. day you too Elliot <laughs> get on the vine <laughs> yeah